Good morning all. Today I want to take a look inside this, not inside the box, but inside the battery. This is Wix's uh, 18 volt, five cell lithium ion battery. And I bought this because, I bought two of these actually, because they were selling them off in a clearance sale for one pound each. They were also selling uh, these off, which are the 10.8 uh, volt three cell batteries. Um, these were also just one pound each. Now I've taken this one apart. I have a video of the insides of this already. It has um, cell protection on a cell level. So if any cell goes below voltage or above voltage, it shuts off the charge and or discharge MOSFETs. Let's take a look at what's inside the 18 volt pack. Now, a couple of lucky people found a very large number of uh, these five cell packs down in Winchester, I believe it was, and uh, they bought 50 packs each. That's a lot of cells, that's 250 cells each. Um, because the cells are only 1.3 amp hours, I kind of figured I didn't want to go too crazy because they're not exactly the most high capacity cells one can get and there we are we're inside does this come away yes it does and oh well there's not a lot in there uh let's get in a little bit closer well the cells are samsung they're inr 18650-13q the 13 my guess is related to the 1.3 amp hours they're flopping about they're not very well held in this cradle. And what you can immediately see here is that on these bridges between the cells, there's just a strap. There's no connection up to the circuit board. So these cells are not being monitored on a cell level, on a per cell level for over voltage and under voltage. So although it might be measuring the total pack voltage, there's positive there. Uh, negative would be, where would it be? It would be over in this corner. Um, so that's very interesting. Looks like there are four wires here running down to the thermistor or possibly thermistors. I'll just see if I can get that off and see if it's got two thermistors, which would be a bit weird. Yes, it does appear to have two thermistors, both kind of bonded in just with this tape but in the same place between these two cells, or probably positioned, well, just handily for where they go back onto the circuit board. So yeah, not quite sure why they felt the need to have two thermistors. We've got lots of temperature protection and absolutely no cell level protection. In fact, what I really ought to do is check the cell voltages. I mean, this is a brand new pack, it's never been used, so one would hope they're all the same, but let's give it a try. So most positive cell, uh, this one that's got the red wire on it is 3.93, let's write that down, 3.93. I'll just measure all of the others. Well, okay, all the cells read 3.93, so this uh, pack is perfectly in balance at the moment, but I mean, Quite clearly there's no balancing mechanism because there's no access to the individual cells, but there's also no protection mechanism uh, at the cell level. Now there's probably protections at the pack level. Let's take a look at this circuit board. Well, we've got a uh, most positive terminal of the cells going straight to here, and this is marked B plus, battery positive. Uh, we've got the most negative Part, uh, connection on the cells going to here which has a little flap uh, oh that has what looks like a fuse there that goes to this terminal in on the black wire to battery negative terminal so the pack is protected against overcurrent just by this fuse that was covered by this plastic so there's no sort of high temperature mica or anything there for when that melts Interestingly, either side of the fuse, there's one of these little plastic pieces. Now they say P 
F on them, which I've looked up, and is phenol formaldehyde. So is that a high temperature plastic? Is it designed to take the the heat of this fuse blowing and uh, the plastic won't melt or catch fire? This apparently is very similar to Bakelite. Uh, we've got a T2 terminal here, which is either something that the charger uses or that the power tool itself uses. Um, we've got a C plus here. Now, could that be charger positive? It does appear to come into this pad and that appears to go into... Now, this is a MOSFET. You can tell that because we've got four pads, all, uh, four pins all connected together here, three connected there and an odd one, which will be the gate. So that goes into here and that goes out to this track, which uh, looks like it goes through those two diodes to uh, battery positive. So yeah, to my mind, what it looks like is the charger input comes in here. It goes through the MOSFET if it's turned on and through these two diodes uh, are the positives at this end. Yeah, they seem to be uh, the cathode, sorry. And into the battery pack. So this is a charging cutoff. So uh, if this is controlled by this other chip, then we're cutting off the charger uh, presumably this chip is looking for a certain potential across the cells, all five of them, we can't measure the cell voltages individually, and cutting off the charger when the pack reaches a maximum. Now there isn't, by the look of it, no, because there's only this fuse, there's no under voltage cutoff, so it's relying on the power tool to do under voltage cutoff. Um, over voltage cutoff, yes, is done by electronics, so the charger doesn't have that circuitry. Uh, the battery does, but it doesn't seem to have a lot else. There are a couple of positions here for some LEDs, and I'll just get the lid of this thing, because in the lid there are a couple of sort of moulded uh, holes there, but they're just covered by the Wix sticker. There's also this um, larger hole here, which probably coincides with whatever this cutout is here. Could that have been a button maybe? Um, perhaps press it to check the um, level of the battery, but none of that is implemented. It's all been not fitted. So this little eight pin chip here uh, does appear to drive through these transistors, the gate of this MOSFET. Um, this is something like a DG or a DC or even an OC 1618 but I can't find any data on it but it's almost certainly going to be monitoring the pack voltage and then when that goes above a certain amount it shuts off this MOSFET. Um, I've been looking at where these two thermistors connect and they both appear to connect together to ground I think it is and then the other connections go to T1 and T2 but the T1 connector is not actually fitted. So although the connection to T1 does go off somewhere else as well, it goes down that little tiny track down to there. So somewhere in amongst this lot. So yes, I suppose uh, the T1 thermistor, although it's not being looked at by either the charger or the tool, it could be used perhaps to cut off the charge MOSFET if the, uh, the whole pack goes over temperature. <laughs> well, I say the whole pack this point uh, here goes over temperature but it, it is a bit odd to see those two thermistors in here with so little other um, control circuitry. I was just interested in uh, whether this 78L05 was actually powered up um, but given that the date of this is 2015 and it's never been used since then I can't imagine that these batteries these cells would be able to run a 78L05 even just the quiescent current of it for four years. And in fact, it does appear that the V-in pin uh, comes through this little diode, this MELF diode, uh, through a couple of 100 ohm resistors in parallel from the charger input. So it appears that that uh, 78L05 5 volt voltage regulator only powers up when you put a charger current in, that powers up and then presumably that powers all this circuitry uh, and will cut off the charger when the pack voltage reaches a high point. How that state is maintained, I can't think at the moment. Oh yes, of course it is maintained because the charger doesn't actually cut off its output. 
so that regulator stays uh, powered up from the charger voltage uh, even when the pack goes over voltage and it uh, turns this MOSFET off. Is that the MOSFET there? That's the MOSFET there. So that's it really. There's not much more to learn about this pack. It's super primitive. But is this safe? Is it safe to charge a pack with no individual cell monitoring? I mean, if these things got out of balance, I still don't quite understand the mechanism for cells going out of balance. It must be tiny amounts over numerous charge and discharge cycles. So maybe they just figure that it wouldn't happen in the lifetime of this uh, battery pack. But yeah, you could potentially take cells uh, well under the minimum 2.5 volts or whatever the minimum uh, has been chosen to be or well over 4.2 if these things got out of balance, but maybe they just don't very easily. Anyway, I certainly won't be using this as a power tool battery pack. I'm going to strip the cells out of this, pull off these uh, welded connectors. I'm looking into a, a welding technique that I want to try and use with nickel strip. So hopefully I can uh, weld some nickel strip onto my own packs. What I might do on the positives of the cells, because um, the terminal is not connected in thermal in a thermal sense to the uh, outside casing of the cell it's probably easier to solder to the positive uh, so I might solder to the positive and run little fusible link wires to a bus but I do want to weld to the negative because it'd be extremely difficult to solder to that because of heat dissipation into the cylinder of the cell so I'm looking into all those things uh, I'm also interested of course in techniques for uh, balancing cells within a pack. Uh, I'm currently liking my cell to pack technique using uh, the little transformer based oscillators. So I'll be looking more into that. But yes, at some point I want to strip all these out and build my own pack. But for the moment, um, this Wix 18 volt battery pack doesn't have a lot in it. Cheerio.